All right. Well, it is 9 12. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we have a quorum here. Take a motion to approve the agenda. So I'll second it. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. This meeting is informational regarding repairs for DD 18. We've seen a lot of you guys before. Here we are again. And Colton, you've kind of got the floor now. Yeah. Okay, like AJ said, this is an informational hearing for DD18. So no decisions, no firm decisions are being made today. This is just so we can get feedback on what the landowners want to do within the district. Um, it's been brought to our attention that it's in need of maybe in need of improvement. Um, this district was petitioned in 26, 2014, and an engineer's report was filed. Um, it's been within 10 years, so that same report can be used. We have to modify it a little bit. Prices have gone up since then on construction. Um, I've handed out, um, everybody should have a copy of the 2016 report, um, a map of the district, and then um, an updated cost estimate, although there are some errors on the cost estimate. Um, the 36 inch diameter pipe, that's item 107. Um, we need about 1400 less feet of that because there's been a dip. It's been dug where that tile would have been placed in the old plans. So that shaves off about $100,000. And then um, if we did put in a new tile, we clean out the, that ditch that's been dug at a cost of about $10,000, um, give or take. So. The plan, um, the plan for the district. So the district, this tile is uh, was constructed in 1914. Um, there's a table in that old report showing the existing drainage coefficients of that tile that was installed. So the, the largest tile that they have that was installed was a 20 inch tile at a 0.1% grade. Um, that's going to kind of limit your drainage coefficient for the whole district because it's the last tile in the, in the chain. It's the furthest downstream. So you're getting about 0.07 inches per acre per day of a drainage coefficient. Uh, the modern drainage standard is half an inch per acre per day to get that drain. So um, you can see the main and then all the laterals on that table. Lateral one, you're getting about a quarter of an inch. Um, lateral two, you're getting that half inch. That's good. Um, lateral three, about a tenth of an inch. Lateral four, about two tenths of an inch, and so on. So they're all they're all undersized. Um, what we proposed today, I think, what we proposed in the report. Um, I think in the in our 2016 report, we proposed replacing several laterals. Um, here today, I think our cost estimate is only for the main. If uh, Jacob's listening and that's wrong, he can jump in and correct me. Um, I know that there's also been some interest in maybe running uh, the ditch further upstream. Um, with that, something we could look into. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as in our, in our report, we've recommended a 36 inch tile. Um, generally, it's cheaper to do a tile um, until you get into that 42 to 48 inch range. A 36, we would generally recommend doing a tile. Um, to dig a ditch, we estimate that cost to be about $5,000 per, uh, per station. Um, so that's every 100 feet, about $50 a foot. Plus you have to pay severance to the lands that you cut with your ditch. So that amounts to about 10% of the farm value. So if you have 80 acres that's being split by the ditch. It's about 10% of that 80 acres. If you're splitting 160 acres, it's about 10% of that 160. And then right-of-way costs also. Um, we'd have to purchase right-of-way from spoil pile to spoil pile on each bank. And that would be the full value of that land. So digging brand new ditches does get fairly costly, um, which is why when you can get a half inch coefficient with a 36 inch tile, we would recommend doing that generally. So um, you all have the map in front of you. Um, now I'll just kind of open it up to you guys and I'd like to hear what, what you all think. So, 
So the, the ditch that was dug already was just basically to clean the tile out because it was plugged with roots. So yeah. I mean, that really isn't probably what they would have dug as a ditch. Right. So that would have to be either redug if we keep that. Yeah. So we would be, we would leave that, but we'd have to dig it out deeper to get an outlet for the tile right. that we proposed. So would the ditch go all the way down to the railroad trestle then? Yeah, to the railroad. Um, so another reason why doing a ditch further upstream of that is problematic is the current railroad crossing isn't big enough for a ditch that would be upstream. So the railroad would have to put in a new bridge and the district could, it, that's possible, but it, it'll take time. Just the railroad will do it on their own schedule. Um, it's a lot quicker to just, you know, bore, bore, under, bore through the railroad. So I guess the way it looks right now, they're going to have to do something not too long. You're road is so bad underneath yes. it that there's yeah. no way they can fix Next that. Next train, they get a ditch. Yeah. yeah. So when John Rosengren yeah. did this report in 2016, he um, proposed putting in a sheet pile there to help with the erosion and then rip wrapping under that bridge. Um, everything within the railroad right of way would be the railroad's responsibility, but we can definitely recommend that to happen. Um, we haven't decided on, you know, we're still very early in this process. Sheet piles are expensive to do. We're looking at other alternatives, but at the very least, we're wrapping under that bridge to help with, and the railroad won't want it, want their bridge being taken out due to erosion either. So, <laughs> yeah, it should be, it should be taken care of. So if we, we do a ditch all the way, mm -hmm. could you do it up to the blacktop then that goes south and then go with the tile from there up underneath the blacktops or yeah the tile so the blacktop they go south out of joyce there yeah is that that's cardinal yeah cardinal. Cardinal. okay yeah i mean that that is something we could look into um if if, if enough folks are interested and like i said it is going to be more expensive than the tile option but you know, ditches you do get significantly more capacity. You're not just limited to your half inch. So you said 36 inch tile. That's about as big as you can go to get cover and stuff in, or I mean, to get a better increase in coefficient. Yeah. So 36 inch is all you need to get your half inch coefficient that we recommend. And then if you go, you can go bigger than that, but you're you get into 42 and 48, it starts becoming it starts to be competitive with a ditch. Yeah. But I guess yeah, we need some. Is there enough covered for a 36? What's is what you say was in there now? 20? Is it 20? 20. There, there is enough cover. I haven't looked very closely at the plans, but John designed the original tile. And I know Jacob's been looking at it to possibly make some tweaks just to save some nickels and dimes here and there. But the the, the plan that John submitted is basically the plan that we would use, same depths. Um and you know so there's one part of this ditch i don't know if people remember from 2016 um where the tile where the sh the main tile is very shallow i think it's about station 105 to 110 um and on your map it's labeled subsided peak area um that was peak ground that stunk about a foot and a half two feet from when the tile was installed and 100 plus years ago um, so now that tile is shallow cover, is my understanding. Um, the new tile is routed to be outside that peak ground. Um, so I don't think cover should be an issue. Is that farmed, that peak area? No, it's CRP. Is it? Or standing water, which is <laughs> a little bolt. Well, it's, it's a good filter, then, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. How much cover do you have at the railroad on the? West side of the railroad track, if you put a 36 in there. Yeah. Let me pull out our plans here. So we've proposed a boring. That's what I'm looking at here is a our plan and profile for the boring through the railroad. It looks like we'd have about four feet on, through the road ditch, and then you'd have more, you know, outside of the road ditch into the field. 
uh, or sorry, the railroad, the ditch next to the railroad, the shallow depression there. So as you can see, we got 1234 yep. ground elevation and our top of pipe is about 1230 going in. And then on the other side, you have a little more. Nope. Good. <laughs> How big a pipe would you see through there? 48 inch? 36. Okay, 36. Mm -hmm. 36 gets us our half inch coefficient that we're looking for. And yeah, any bigger than that, and you start getting competitive with a with an open ditch for from a cost standpoint. Oh, well, you think you need to go RC uh concrete? Yeah. Go do all the so we always we always do RCP. Um if we think it's cheaper, like you'll get you might get uh, for if you're just comparing pipe cost to pipe cost, you're going to get cheaper costs with HDPE. But when you factor in rock and RCP being easier to install, we think you get more competitive bid prices with RCP, and you're just not as worried about it. You know, we don't have to be inspecting it all the time to make sure that it was rocked properly. You know, RCP is going to be durable and it's going to last 200 years probably. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, the only thing bad about uh, concrete though is no. Drainage, you know, you put that new main in, and nobody's gonna have drains like they do now. Yeah, so you'd have to put a bunch of new tile along that. Yeah, so uh, the dual main. the dual wall HDPE that some some districts have used also isn't perforated. Right. So none of, none of this big stuff is perforated. The whole the it's the whole purpose is just to be a conduit for private tile and surface intakes on the tile. So it, it like you said, it won't take in very much water itself. You know, I, th I think you're gaining that extra now because your joints and your clay or your concrete have failed over the last hundred years. And so you're, you become a partially perforated tile, which is where your tree root problems and all that yeah. other stuff comes into play too. So I think, yeah, the main's designed just to carry, not yep. to actually drain. Yeah. Yep. And yep. those old tiles, depending on what, what they constructed with, sometimes they're just two foot pieces that were set butt to butt. So there's going to be some natural perforation on the clay tiles, but we they're built with bell joints now. Um, so there's not a whole lot of water seeping in, but it is sturdy. And we don't want a whole lot of water seeping into these mains because you get, you, they'll get silted in eventually. The original plan, they were going to use the old main. Use the old. They were going to use the old main every so often. They were going to dump it into the new main. Yeah, interconnect it. They still planning that? Well, that depends on the on the condition of the tile. So we we didn't we just we didn't before construction we uh, investigate the existing tile. Um, in a lot of cases, it's easier to crush the old tile. But if people are worried about missing tile, um, we connect every private tile that we find as we go and install these uh, these new mains. Um, but if we're concerned about missing a portion, or if we think that the old main is still in good condition. Then we'll tie it in or uh, send out a plastic tile to cross connect with it. Well, I know in that that peat area that you were talking about earlier, that that went bad several years ago and it just holes everywhere. So then that got replaced with plastic. Mm -hmm. No, the concrete. 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 Yeah, that did get replaced with concrete. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those that you know if this project moves forward any tile maps that you guys have would be beneficial to them because then they, if there's stuff there, they know they can get it reconnected. So we don't find out two years down the road, three years down the road that we missed half a dozen tile. Yeah, um, 100%. So yeah, any tile, you know, if the, if the project goes forward with whatever, any tile maps would be greatly appreciated. It's just going to benefit you guys in the end too. So make sure all your tile that you have in there privately is, <laughs> is reconnected. Go back to the outlet. You say you've got four feet of cover at the outlet of the railroad track. Through yeah, through the railroad track. How far above is above the uh, bottom of the ditch is that tile? So currently, where the tile, I believe they they basically match flow lines. The current tile, we want it at least a foot deeper than that. Um, I believe, uh, I believe, John Rosengrid did submit a plan for a ditch. Uh, back eight years ago now. Um, so we would basically be digging it out to those plans to give this tile an outlet. Um, in terms of process, it'll 
if you're familiar with what happened in 2016, it'll be the same process. We'll have to have a, a set of hearings on this. If this is a proposed improvement, districts have to keep their uh, files in a state of repair. Um, but, so uh, the board is the trustee. They're obligated to keep things in a state of repair, but this would be an improvement since we're increasing the drainage capacity. So it'll have an open hearing. Everybody can object. Um, if they choose to, and then uh, nothing can go forward if it meets the right of remon remonstrance. It's 50% of the landowners owning 70% controlling, owning 70% of the land. Um, if it hits that threshold, the improvement is dead in the water. Um, the board may still choose to go through with an improvement. Um, and they kind of, a lot of this depends on on the feedback you get from, from you all as the landowners. You're the ones impacted, you're the ones paying. You know, that it comes down to you guys in a lot of ways. Well, if you go look at it right now, you know there needs to be improvements. <laughs> there isn't much repair left. No. <laughs> Is it safe to say you guys are y'all in agreement that something needs to be? I mean, you guys all wouldn't be here uh, fighting it, I don't think, because everything I've heard is this, we got a lot of ponds out there. So um, the question is, what step would you like to take? What what do you guys want to see? Yeah, so so in the in that report that I handed out to you, I believe that has the, uh, the set of plans in it, and at the very least, some overview maps. Um, so things that we'd also like to know is like, are there places where you would maybe want the district to run a lateral, or are there laterals that you don't think are necessary? Um, the way laterals work is only the landowners. Uh, that are benefited by that lateral will pay for that lateral. So you'd be on your own schedule. So it is a consideration. Usually if it's a short run of tile, it is cheaper to just tile in private into the district main than to construct a short lateral to the district. So the current proposal is just for the main because that would include the lateral in 2016. I believe so. But you know, obviously we're open to more if there is as we say, that could be addressed if there's specific needs. I mean, mm -hmm. got some that are in tough shape to get addressed now. Same situation. I mean, if you got the latter one, mainly you, you're going to pay for it. So, yeah. And uh, I think our, if, if anybody, I can I can give everyone our phone number or email. Um, if anybody thinks of anything after the meeting, feel free to give us a call or an email. How about you, Rich? I'm just glad you got to open ditch and wish you had a time to go. Made a tremendous improvement and contained the water rather than letting it spread out. And it's this kind of rain, it would have covered mm -hmm. three times what it is. You can just boil all the ground down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I remember right, there was a cost of like 70000 for through the railroad. Yeah, but that uh, railroad is responsible for that cost right away to right away. They've changed the law. They have changed the law. They've just changed. How easy is that going to be? Last year. It, yeah. it won't be that easy <laughs> in terms of getting the permit. But all of that stuff gets charged back. Our time on that. Um, and then everything has to construct it. All of that gets put back on. Can, can, they, can they stop it? They'll file an objection. I mean, so their objection would be part of the, mm -hmm. you know, if there was a remonstrance file, I mean, they'd be part of that. But they they have a small part. Yeah. As far as they, don't, they don't own any land. Yeah. You know, they'll no doubt we'll get a letter that says no, we object no, no matter what we they do. they send in a boilerplate objection no matter what in every drainage district they're in. It's my we've experience. Got, we've got in south of town. So yeah, south of town, right? Keenan's there. Uh they objected to it, but we have to go through it. So they're getting the permits and we're gonna bore underneath it this fall. Um they've already got the state permits going to 65, but they're just waiting on the railroad stuff. They're a little takes a little longer. Once that's done, crops are out. We're putting a 36 underneath the railroad track there, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a process. Um, but I think that process would be a lot quicker than them building a bridge. I'm thinking if if the open ditch thing went and they had to build a bridge, uh, you'd probably see multiple years before anything got done. So we'd be stuck with the way it is for now until that bridge got completed. So with the amount of erosion that's happening at the railroad track, something needs to be done mm -hmm. kind of like now. Yep. We could bore underneath the railroad and still have an open ditch. 
and rip wrap, rip wrap around the pipe to do that a lot. So uh, we'll we'll leave. The plan would be to leave the open ditch where it currently is and actually to deepen it. Um, but then we would bore through the railroad and outlet into that open ditch on the other side of the railroad. Are you, um, are you asking more? But then there's more under the railroad and then go open ditch from there, right. from the, there and on and west. Yeah, you you just, it would kind of defeat the purpose of having your open ditch. You wouldn't have nearly enough capacity through your board outlet. How big of a pipe could you get in? I mean, I, you could put like a six foot pipe underneath there. Can you put multiple pipes under there? Good. Those are good questions. Um, so the railroad is obligated to pay for things within the right of way, but I'm sure there's a line of what's reasonable to go through there. And I think that I think the railroad would probably say it's cheaper for us to build a new bridge than to have you guys bore several large pipes through there. Um, and in that case, you know, reasonableness would say you know they get to build their bridge and it might take several years. Wouldn't that end up being a bottleneck if you've got an open ditch to the north, the northwest of there, and then trying to dump it in a pipe underneath yeah. the railroad? Yeah. And, and that's still where does not make it and just overflow and make a bigger mess. And that's where you, you'd run into, you'd need several borings. You'd need large pipes, which might impact how much cover you have. Um, and it gets costly very fast. And that's the point where the, the railroad would say, well, we probably just want to do a, a bridge instead. That makes more sense. And then we're back to the to the bridge conundrum. Or would they have an opportunity to fight it because we're going beyond what Iowa code says we have to do with the, with the drainage coefficient? You know, if we only have to be a half inch and a 36 will work, would they fight it? To delay process saying they only want to pay for a 36 because that's what yeah. it takes even though a 48 would be better if we're putting in if we're going to open ditch at each side yeah i don't know how strong their case would be but they would definitely try everything and to fight it and they would be... delay to delay everything Sorry, that much longer because they have attorneys on godly amounts of money so mm -hmm. i just i just don't want to see it go to that i i see i see your guys's point and it's some valid points but it's just obviously we have an issue and Sooner is better than later, as long as we can come up with something that will work. <clears throat> so, at the end of the day, it's it's up to you guys. We we don't personally care. It's your guys' money. So, whatever you guys decide you want to spend your money on mm -hmm. for the future, because this is going to be another fifty to hundred year deal before this conversation gets brought up, and Enos will still be around, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, I'm, I'm I'm guessing it would be pretty expensive to go across the two blacktops with a ditch too, wouldn't it? Um, We'd have to put box in. culverts in, or or we may have to build bridges. Depends on the on the hydraulics behind it. Yeah. On whether we could get away with box culverts well, or bridges, and we should do it. Depends on box culverts. Uh, two to three hundred thousand per crossing to the county, because secondary roads pays for those crossings as well. So. If we cross two blacktops or two roads, uh, we could be looking at three quarters of a million dollars in, in box culverts if it worked that way. But if it ended up being bridges, then it's even more. Yeah, and I, I'm sure it'd be box culverts. Yeah. But. So, yeah. So then on, on I guess on our side, we're looking at expense because um, we have to come up with that money, too. So, yeah, when we're willing to do what we have to do, we know it's it's a drainage thing. We have no choice, but we would rather see it. Well, economically so at first i guess i was thinking open ditch but with the cost of digging a new ditch and the cost of crossing the roads and all that kind of stuff i mean if 36 i mean i think an open ditch would carry more than a half inch coefficient oh, but, absolutely would you yeah. know so that would be beneficial but is it going to be cost effective to do that but also if you're going to plug it at the railroad it doesn't do you much good right yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's not a ditch under the railroad. I'm not sure why a ditch anywhere else would make sense. Right. And I, I think if a pipe will do it, you know, we would prefer to have a pipe. Right. Or if it's a bare land company, so I mean, we would have a lot of ditch you all through there and divide that farm and the farm you're crossing that. And that's the thing, too. So if it splits your farm, you guys are responsible for the crossings on that ditch. Yeah. So you got to put the pipe in, you got to build it all. The district. That's not a district cost. It's that's it's individual cost there too. So that's another expense that could come along if it splits an eighty or something like that. You know, if the engineer says it, says the ditch is the best way, 
the most effective way to do it, even though it costs more, then you know, so be it. But if the engineer says the bike may do it, I'd rather that the yeah. question there is too. Do you go to the next step bigger tile to get bigger, more coefficient, which was an argument out here south of town, and they all kind of went with just the half inch coefficient. Yeah. One guy wanted the bigger tile, but some districts have gone to a one inch coefficient. Um if if you all are con that concerned about you know your overland flows, that is something you go to. No tile is going to fix fix yeah. issues the way a ditch would, but it will give you the purpose of that half inch coefficient is just to give you enough base flow that you can get the water down in a few days. Now this rain we've had this spring, you know, historic levels of wetness, a tile won't won't save you, but um, a tile will get the job done in a lot of cases. So can can it be shaped to take care of the initial flood when we get the rains to try to get surface water to go quickly? You know, the quicker you can get it off and it has to stand in the field and go through the tile. Yeah. Um, yeah, I try to make that part of the project to make sure we yeah, aren't I having, you know, pumps here and there that are restricting water. Yeah, restricting it. Just get it away the quick as you can. Sure. Yeah. If if we did reshaping, we'd we'd probably buy right of way as a district and make it a, a grass waterway, which you'd have that right of way cost, but you'd save a ton on excavation and you wouldn't have severance costs because you can still cross it with your machinery. But that's just, you know, do the landowners that would be impacted, do they want a grass waterway through the field? That's a question. Um, and then in terms of actual drainage capacity, grass waterways are great for reducing erosion if that's an issue. They don't provide tons and tons of extra capacity. It is a place for water to kind of accumulate and go, but um, when grass grows long in a, in a grass waterway, it, it significantly slows down the water. So you went there on rain six inches. So it was a pretty good river going down there. Except the bad part was it was outside the grass. It was. <laughs> well, it's yeah. like most waterways. Right. Yeah, they yeah. probably yeah. need to be it's, shaped. We can was, we can uh, definitely yeah. put together an estimate if that's something people are into, and then we can kind of weigh the cost versus benefit from there, but it's I, it's not even a half measure compared to a ditch, obviously. Well, that'd be the cheapest part of the whole project would be reshaping that waterway through Beverly Land there, getting that cleaned out. It's probably never been cleaned out in the last 50 years, I would assume. And I'm assuming you're moving the tile one one side or the other of that water anyway, where right now it's about in the center, but isn't it Paul? Yeah, it, it, when it gets take, the black top, it goes into the field. But to get more, yeah. to get the depth you're, you're talking about, you're gonna have to move it out of the center of that water. Basically. Right, I think it's, the main is shaded north of the current tile yeah. along the whole route, basically. And if there is spots that can, a few intakes be installed, that okay. fence lines or something like that. Yeah, we like to recommend. We like to. It wasn't in the original estimate, but since then we have started putting intakes at uh, uh, property boundaries. Just to, they're nice to know where the tile is for maintenance purposes and getting tile installed. And then in low spots, we can do that as well. Um, after that, after the initial project intakes are landowner's responsibility, though the district won't come back in and pay for a new intake after the fact. Well, we'll, we'll to answer your question, Mark, we had Ruggins' look at, you know, on, on the north side of A38 there, thinking about shaping that, and it's so flat that he said he really couldn't do couldn't anything with it to try and shape it to make like a waterway. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is kind of what it is, because he thought, well, if we can narrow it up and put a waterway in there or something, but he said it's so flat from there to that grass the highway to the grass. Yeah, it's so it's flat. flat as could be. Yeah. So I don't know if we can do anything to try and narrow that up to make a waterway or not because mm -hmm. it just spreads out so far. Great. Right. The only thing you do is a ditch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, you could do it. Yeah. I just hate to have you guys spend, well, all of us spend $1.4 million and still be on the You still ain't half. Right. Or if you spend 100000 more, you know the price is going to solve it. Well, well, that's the problem. My big fear is like a 15 inch on the top end. I mean, there's a lot of ground that goes into that. Um, and there's not less tile getting put in the ground. You know, so for the rest of my lifetime, and we're putting more tile in, is that going to be enough at that half inch coefficient? Yeah. Because it is such a big area up there that drain into that. That if you were to, I think if you were to tile that out, you'd be looking at a much bigger, even if the outlet, say, with that 838, with that big of an area, you're talking 500 acres up there. 
I don't think a 15 inch is nearly big enough. Sure. Yeah. So the, the half inch drainage coefficient was adopted in the 50s is the standard. Mm -hmm. There, there's been rumors. I, I don't know. I wouldn't say there's anything concrete happening at all. You know, it may never get changed. But with climate change, with increasing intensity of storms, um, there has been talk of potentially raising the drainage coefficient in the future. But I will say that, and, and we've always recommended half-inch tiles for the most part, and people have been happy with them, you know, noticeably better results than, than their previous tiles. Um, and yeah, you won't, massive, massive rain events, you are going to have ponding still, you're going to have drownouts, but that half an inch per acre per day, it's supposed to help take that water yeah. down in, in a couple of days and you know you said right now it's, still up. it's less it's way less than quarter inch coefficient right now. Really yeah, you're you're really you're at about you're at about a, a tenth, I think, on the main. So it showed that it was was different in different so, ladder, different parts of it. So yeah. where it's bladder it came to the way you're... Yeah. And then that that main is it, that outlet of the main restricts everything upstream. So you do get a little better drainage when you have a lateral that has a half inch, but if you're dumping into a main that only has a tenth, you know, you're going to get a restricted outlet. So just getting the main to have the outlet it needs, it would be huge for every tile upstream of it. So with that being said, would you like cost estimates on a full half inch all the way through my Iowa code and then see what the next upsize was if it gets to like three quarters? And just see the cost difference. Yeah, would that be something to do? And then we can you gotta have this discussion again of, okay, if it's only a few hundred thousand to go to this next level, maybe you guys have to do it. But if it's twice the cost, then yeah. it, it wouldn't you know. take us much to throw that together. Right. And that's like a forty-eight inch tile. Would that give you about the same coefficients in open ditch? I mean, open ditch will always have more, um, but do a little uh, more maintenance. Yeah, do things going forward. Well, we can we could try that and get a cost comparison at a half, and then a cost comparison at at three quarters, and let you guys make the choice. And then, um, the ditch situation, I guess, as far as the upside upstream of the railroad tracks, no ditch is that going to put a burden on everybody for splitting up their fields and that kind of stuff. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be great. <laughs> Rather have that than the water, right? We right. do have to deal with the ditches, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah we deal with them all the time. So, yeah. I mean, it's a good way to get the water. Okay. Well, in fact, like now, you can't cross it anyway because it's right. so much water. Right. 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 Well, well, it's, it's not a normal year, year. Yeah. yeah, there's been several not normal years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's been a long time since you know these last few that it's been a drought. We've been able to cross them, but many years before that, we couldn't cross it. Well, unfortunately, we can't build a big enough tile for certain years. No. There's just no way. But so, so what did they do for yeah. coefficient steps? Is it half, three quarter inch, or how? Yeah, there's really no rule for going beyond a half inch. Okay. Um, it's just kind of preference. So, um, there are some engineers that always start with a half inch and then maybe the landowners talk them or start with an inch and always talk them down. We always start with, you know, the standard. It is the cheapest. It's probably the best value, we would say, generally. Um, but where there's always room to do more and it does kind of future proof you, like you were suggesting. I'm just saying if we took, you know, you know, you gotta have a 36. So if they went to a 42 and they upsize everything all the way to the end, they could tell you, okay. Putting this size pipe in will get you to, to 0.7 or 0.8 or whatever. It may get you to an inch, um, but you know here's where they're at for half. So if we just upsize everything one size, they could figure that out and say, okay, you're going to actually gonna get three quarters now yeah. for this extra amount of money because of the pipe size. And that's like I say we we ran into it on the same project south or same thing south of town is when you get 42 and 48, there was substantial increases um, in that, but. So say it's, if you go to a higher coefficient, can what you're dumping it into handle that? Um, if we're if we're dumping into a ditch, we can definitely get it enough capacity in the ditch. Which that's that would be the plan. We any tile that we do would be bored through the railroad and then uh, outlet oh, into the ditch that we'd be cleaning up. So we definitely make sure there's enough an out, enough of an outlet for it. Doesn't change. Um, but the smaller you go, the better chance the railroad would be. More receptors. 
Well, I mean, if, if, 30, if, yeah, 42, maybe. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter to them. If you put in a, a, a 48 inch tile and a 48 inch boring is still cheaper than them putting in a whole bridge. So, right. Well, I guess I'd like to see upsizing it because, like Andy said, we know that we're not going to stop tiling. Mm -hmm. So, if we have a half inch coefficient now and then we can put on thousands and thousands of more feet of tile. Yeah. Then we're just kind of getting yeah. backlogged again. So I guess I'd like to see that. And I I wouldn't mind seeing an open ditch cause. Sure. Yeah. So um, and then I guess another thing to point out is like I said earlier, this that these mains, this main is just a conduit for your private tile. So if, if you have only pattern tiled your field to a half inch coefficient, that's really the only benefit you're getting out of it, even if you have a one inch main. Um, I mean, it'll be a little less overwhelmed in big storm events, but um, so you will see a little bit better, but you won't be seeing that full one inch better unless you privately tile. So you have, you have, you have to consider your private costs. Like yeah. right now, you can walk out into that grass area in that heat and it's shooting out of the intake. Mm -hmm. It's just like a geyser out there. It wouldn't take long to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars just trying to fix that. No. Sure. So I guess. Um, I the same. Is there anybody really opposed to coming back with a cost estimate? We, I mean, we have our half inch cost estimate basically done. I can come back with one or two larger pipe size options and a cost estimate for an open ditch ran to that cardinal black top. Um, is anybody opposed to, to having those numbers brought back or would like anything else additionally looked at at this point in time? Like I said, you can always call and email us and we can always dig into something for you, but. Because it would not be, like you said, those box builders would be so high priced that it would, I mean, I don't know that. It, it'll cost the county money and at the end of the day, it's, it's so, it comes back on you because yeah, it is tax dollars. Right. So it comes back to us one way. Yeah, so we all get a, we all get a chunk of it, you know. Right. Severance is going to add up fast too, Paul. I think. But, that, but Severance is going to add up fast yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. If we ended, the open ditch at Cardinal, I don't think we'd cross any roads no, with the wouldn't. ditch because we would bore you the tile under Cardinal the outlet gotcha. into the ditch. Just take off the ditch up to Cardinal. Okay. You guys are okay with that? How long, Jacob? How long do you need? Or Colton, I'm sorry. Yeah. No <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Just, laughs> worries. Uh, I would probably say about a month. Okay. Be on the okay. safe side. We're not going to send you guys another letter. This is going to be your notice. We set a meeting date today. Write it down because this will be your notice. We won't send letters out if, again. If it's a public hearing, though, this was just an informal. Yeah, we'll do another informal okay. to decide what the project would be, and then we'll get into that public hearing. Then everybody will get notified again. But this is just going to be additional information. Right. Um, Are we okay? We'll have to have a public hearing. Then. Yeah, we can right. just go straight to the public hearing. No, you have to have another. We would. We would have to send out notices if we wanted to go yeah. to the public hearing. I guess we wanted to do that. We you could, could we could have the informational public. meeting first. Yeah, we make a decision that. and jump in the public hearing with this set of plans. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. You guys just have to make your minds up all in one day. The only thing is, is with that ditch option, it's really not going to be an option if you can't get a big enough fight through that railroad. It's pretty much kills it. Yeah. Right. It if you, if you can't get your crossing through the railroad for the ditch, it's not worth it. That's why I said you get there to fight and come close to the cost. Um, the um, in it. terms of doing it the same day, I think it'd be a lot cheaper from an engineering standpoint to get, if we we're going to have an informational meeting anyway, to get it whittled down and then do a, do a public meeting later, because then we can only come out with however many sets of plans we need. You know, okay. we'd have to do new, we'd have to do plans for each one. Do you want to separate? Yeah, you, have a, you want to separate them? Yeah. Get it, get it figured out what the project's going to be. Sorry, it says I'm on mute. I, I clicked on unmute. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Can I call him? So I said, are you made an internet? That's why I don't get paid to be an IT person. Oh. Thank you. Hi, Jacob, can you hear us? 
Yes, I can hear you now. All right, we got you. We got you in the room here. So, yeah. So I I would suggest we've got these options. We will update, amend the current engineer's report because it's still good because we're not over ten years yet, and we will file that engine that amendment and then schedule a public hearing with all those options. I think that's another informational hearing. I'm not sure we'll accomplish anything more than just having the final numbers with an amendment report. Okay. So from that, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So from and that then, and then we go ahead. Yeah, from that from that public hearing, we can either continue that public hearing like we did for 14 and give the landowners more time to discuss, or we can make a decision right away. If let's say we, we come up with we have a one inch proposal, a three quarter inch proposal, half inch in a ditch, and we show all four and everyone comes to the meeting and says, Let's let's go forward with one option, we can do that. Well, we wouldn't be able to do that with an informational meeting. Okay. So my recommendation would be have us amend the current report with those four options and then have schedule a public hearing and buy all the landowners. I think Jacob's right. Cause I think, you know, with the, it's four sets of plans technically, but the three, the three tile options are going to be basically the same. Sure. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. be too much. Problem. Although it'll be just estimates will be higher. The cost yeah. estimates will be higher as the pipe goes up. Yeah. Okay. So a month enough, or do you want six weeks? Um, because we'll have to send I notices. Like a, I, I would like a little bit more time since I don't think I'll be in the office for the, so I can look at it more. Okay. Um, and, we're trying to, we're getting into we'd be getting into harvest end of August before these guys take off. I think we, I think, yeah, we could probably do it end of August. That would give us about two months. I think that would be good. Okay, uh, our last week in August, I think, would be good. Okay, we'll aim for that last Monday in August then. Uh, you guys will all get letters again because this is a public hearing. So, but we can set that date today, couldn't we? Or do you set it when you receive the report? You set it when you receive the report. Okay. When we receive the report and, and we'll amend, amend, the amendment, tomorrow. amendment, right? Tentatively, we're the, the to amendment. I guess. Then, well, since it's an amendment, mm -hmm. I think let's go ahead and set the hearing today because it's amendment. So technically, we already have the insurance report on mm -hmm. file. True. We can file an amendment all the way up into up until the hearing. So let's go ahead and schedule the hearing today. Because we already have the engineer's report on file and we can file the amendment at any time between now and the hearing. Okay. Last Monday in August. Is is that not that's not a holiday, right? No. No. Nope. September's Labor Day. Twenty sixth. Nine, nine thirty. Nine thirty, Jacob. 1030 sounds good. Doing both meetings yet. Yeah. Yeah. August 26th at 930. Um, we'll have Val send letters out again. And uh have a published on paper in 20 days. Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that'll give you should give you plenty of time. So okay, that's what that's the direction we'll go then, Jacob. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank Is there anything else, Jacob, or can we hang up? No, I thought otherwise. I think Cole did a nice job. Explain it all. All right, Wait, good. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jacob. Yep, thanks. Bye. 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 So yeah. is, is this new proposal going to mess with the wetland determinations that are in the whole area? Yes. You're talking about going lower. Is this going to be a so improved, issue with the with the uh, NRCS? It will be, and that'll be between you, the landowners, and the NRCS. Um, we know, I know when we did this originally, we asked for wetland determinations as a, as a district, um, and we've stopped doing that. And the NRCS will not give us info about any contracts they have with landowners. So, what's, if, the, what's the purpose of that? I don't know. <laughs> I think I, mean, I think it's what, because how does that do anybody any good? You know, I don't come clean with it and plan for it and address it. Yeah, it, it does make it difficult, but I guess from their point of view, they have no contract with us. It's with you. Um, so we do you're, it you're get, free to share with us. We do it and then get penalized later or? Yes. And so <laughs> this sounds like a good thing. This improvement, this is a very important point you brought up. Um, any wetlands that they've determined, they will consider those 
improved, even if you haven't tiled into it yourself. Just the fact that we put a new main through right. there, they will consider it improved. Yeah, if you lower the the main ditch as it is now, mm -hmm. that'll create a whole new investigation from even the ones that are up a half a mile away. That'll change their yeah their drainage. Everything that drains. Yeah. Everything in this watershed that's yeah. benefited will be impacted. So is everybody going to make new wetland determinations? Um, if you haven't. Yeah. Or is a wet oh. is a determination good as soon as you have them? You know, I, I'm not an expert on how that works, but I would recommend would getting be. new determinations if you if well, you're at all concerned. Yeah. It should be a bit. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I thought it was. I think as long as you're not actually going into that wetland and trying to tile it, I don't know if you have to. I guess our understanding is they will consider it a. No aspect. Yeah. Even if you don't tile it, they'll still consider it a drain. In order to stay contract compliant, you won't be able to fund it anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, they can still stop you from farming that land. I need to get push for drilling. It's not really. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? Kind of all on the same page. We'll get three, four different options for you guys. You can uh, landowners can determine that at our public hearing, um, and we'll do that August twenty sixth. So I need a motion to set the public hearing date for August twenty sixth at nine thirty a.m. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, public hearing date is set. Val will send out notices and post it in the paper, the whole nine yards. So you'll, you guys will see this again. And uh, maybe we can kind of get to a decision before harvest. Um, and you never know um, if everything's done, if it gets bit out and we get a mild winter, some guys like to use this for winter work. So we know there's some hungry contractors because the last couple we did we got very very competitive prices we had a lot we had uh eight or nine eight or nine contractors at our last one so it's kind of a yeah yep so there's there and from what i've heard around this area there's still some hungry contractors so if everything works out right and they could get bid by fall or winter to possibly be done in the spring before crops or like say if we get some mild month in the winter might work out too so Mm -hmm. <laughs> cross our fingers on that so we do we do prefer summer we think we get better bids doing it even accounting for cross damages and the like um but yeah the sooner the sooner we can do it the better though still and it'll be somewhat up to the contractor's discretion how it works is we give them a completion date that they have to hit and when they get it done from there from when they get the contract with completion date is totally up to them. So we can't force them to be on site or anything. So that that that's how it would work. So we would set a completion date at the at the hearing when this is all decided and then go forward. Okay. Anything else? Thank you for your time, guys. I take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. No second. All in favor, aye. Aye. All right, medium to adjourn. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you guys. Hopefully, we'll get you something figured out. <laughs>